The Sunday Independent Today ran a story titled How the CR17 Campaign Funds Were Channeled. In the report, information and names of people who contributed financially to Ramaphosa's campaign are laid bare. Last night, just hours before the Sunday newspapers hit the stands, the presidency issued a strongly worded statement warning South Africans that the president's confidential banking information had been leaked to the media. The presidency went on to say that the information had been held by the public protector. Joining us in studio to talk more about the investigative unit uh, and how they obtained the so-called leak emails, I'm joined by independent investigative editor Pete Rampetti. Thanks so much for your time on SABC News. How do readers picking up the Sunday Independent know, uh, trust that information? Have you seen those banking records yourself as well as with your co-authors? Uh, and how do we know to trust what you're saying? Look, uh, thanks very much for having us here. If you read that story, you will see that uh, the second paragraph was saying that according to bank statements, which we have seen as the Sunday Independent and other records, so that in itself should tell you that we have seen uh, the bank statements, the records and the leaked emails. But also, what is also of particular interest is that if you read the statement from the presidents, which we are quoting now, nowhere in that statement are they saying that we are fabricating information or what we are writing about doesn't exist. They're just saying that they're concerned about how that information found its way to uh, the media. And they're also saying that they don't want uh, people to, uh, you know, read too much into that information because of how it was, uh, uh, you know, found. So there's no way where they're saying that, look, these people are fabricating, they're talking uh, 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 something that doesn't exist, or they're actually imagining things. There's no way in that statement where they're saying that. And so that, that, that in itself should tell you that the, the, the information and the facts are not in dispute. What is in dispute is what uh, they allege is um, illegal uh, ma uh, uh, manner, the illegal manner in which the information was, uh, uh, I mean, found its way to the, to, to the public. So how did that information make its way to the Sunday Independent? Look, as investigative uh, journalists, we've got various sources uh, across the, the country and we speak to them from time to time. So we cannot reveal how we found that information in the same way uh, some of our colleagues who, uh, you know, come up with their own exposés every week, uh, they, they, they don't, they're not asked where they found their information. In fact, you had Media24 uh, last week uh, reporting on the leaked emails. I never had anybody, including yourself, asking them where they found those leaked info, uh, uh, emails. So it can be that uh, there is one set of rules for the Sunday Independent or Independent Media and another for other media companies. Where we find the information should not be an issue. What should be the issue is whether that information is authentic and that the facts are in dispute. And at this point in time, nobody, including yourself, uh, can dispute the facts. What I'd like to say is that I'm conducting the interview with you now. You and I are having a conversation for the benefit of people who are watching. I will, I'm not talking about Media24, so I'd like us to have a conversation where you give me information, not as though I'm adversarial, but as, uh, you give me information so the people watching can understand what's happening. I'm just giving the context uh, right. of how investigative journalism works. Right. So some of the findings that you were able to make as a result of this information, I'm assuming it's a lot, it's a lot more information than what was in the Sunday Independent today. How did you decide perhaps which donors you're going to bring to the fore and which people you're going to profile who gave money to CR17? If you can check, we have actually uh, profiled the major donors. You know, you, you would have people who donated uh, uh, 100 rand, for example, uh, 50 rand. So we didn't profile those kinds of people. So we went for people who are known and those who would have donated at least 50,000 or more. And, and those are the p people that we, we, we mentioned. If we check, we, we didn't actually start uh, this week. Last week in the Sunday Independent, we mentioned people like Raymond Ackerman, the, the, the owner of Pick and Pay, who had donated one million rand. So we focused on the major ones. But this time around, we also uh, mentioned those who have donated any amount beyond 50,000 rand. There's a, co there's a confusion uh, there. Some of the uh, references look like transaction names so uh, there's something saying absent or nation building can you just give me clarity that maybe i'm not understanding properly what's happening there look uh, a person who donated money reference themselves as nation building 
Remember, if you go to the bank and you donate money to anybody, they want to know the, the reference. Almost everybody there either put their names down as the donors or they put the names of their companies. So uh, uh, um, when coming to this particular donation, the reference is nation building. Mm -hmm. This is the person who donated or the entity which donated. Nowhere in the article did we say APSA donated money. We said mm -hmm. APSA nation building donated money. Whether it's APSA themselves, it's up to them to clarify whether they know this nation building or not. Or whether it's a person, that person must come out and say, I'm nation building and I'm the one who donated. At this point in time, we've never implicated APSA. Okay. Will you be investigating other political party funders? Was it important to just focus on the CR17 campaign? There have been questions perhaps about, are we going to see an NDZ expose or other political party funders? Look, at this point in time, the investigation comes or follows what uh, the complaint, uh, and the complaint from Musi Maimani to the public protector. It's not a Sunday independent investigation which started now by ourselves. There was a complaint from the leader of the DA, Musi Maiman, to the public protector, which sparked an investigation by the public protector, which we are now following uh, on. So if there are other donations which warrant investigations, we don't have a problem doing that. But for now, we're investigating this particular one because it's being investigated by the public protector. And there's already a complaint from the DA about how this donation uh, uh, came about. Also, you must also understand that we're investigating the president of the country and how uh, 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 you know, uh, he was funded to become the leader of the ANC and eventually the leader of the country. So it's in the best interest of you and I and people out there to know how the president of this country uh, uh, ascended to power as the leader of the ANC who funded him and whether or not he's indebted to those people. I think it's in the best interest for all of us to focus on him at this point in time than the people who uh, 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 you know, competed against him in the run up to Nazareth, who are not president of this country at this point in time. And the other interesting element that people should never lose focus uh, 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 about is that some of the people who donated money Already, I mean, I can t t give an example with someone like uh, the former APSA uh, CEO, Maria Ramos. She donated money after the conference, which was last year in August. And the interesting part there is that why would people donate money to a, a campaign fund which was meant for a conference which took place in December 2017, a year later? And after donating, a few months later, she gets appointed to the PSC board. That is of particular interest to us because we want to know whether or not some of these people who are donating after the conference are doing so in, in an attempt to buy influence, mm -hmm. to buy contracts, to buy positions. I think that uh, for me is more important than people saying, why don't you also investigate so and so? There's nothing wrong. We can investigate them, but at this point in time, we want to know whether the people who are donating or who donated are not uh, uh, unduly benefiting from the state. Uh, for example, also remember Aspen Pharmacare, which got a two billion rand tender uh, uh, to supply uh, antiretroviral anti drugs in 2015, also donated uh, to the CR17 on the last day of the conference, on the 20th of December 2017. Why donate money when the conference is done? And you also have people like Sifiso Dabengwa, people like Mark Lambeti, uh, the former CEO of Imperial Holdings. They donated a, a million rand uh, uh, each to, to, to that campaign. Immediately afterwards, Mark Lambert was appoint, appointed to the ESCOM board. Sivisa Dabengwa is now the, 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 a member of the ESCOM board. We want to understand whether they are not being uh, uh, repaid for donating to the CR17 campaign, which I think is in the best interest of this country. Okay. We spoke to the presidency uh, spokesperson last night, Kusera Diko, and there was a concern about information being obtained illegally and, and the presidency saying that they'd be okay with this information coming to the fore. There's just a concern around the ethics of how that information came out and obviously private banking information um, being violated. What's your response to that? Look, uh, how the information was uh, received uh, uh, by us what I can tell you is that it was, it was not illegal. But whether there are people who receive that information illegally, I don't know. I mean, that, that, that's for other people to respond to. And it's also for Kusela to tell us how 
uh, was that information obtained illegally by whom when and 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 in how illegal is it for people to obtain uh, bank statements especially of the people who donated to a, to a campaign which resulted in uh, the president becoming the leader of this country i think we shouldn't have uh, uh, different standards for, for for different people you remember there were the so-called group that leaks at some point which was of very of particular interest to all of us because they they gave an impression uh, that the group that had captured former president jacob zuma and other people and we we're all excited because we we're getting to understand whether there are people who are pulling strings behind the scene but why is it different now when uh, there are other leaks which are about the president and people want want all of us to get concerned about the legality and who gets what information how instead of interrogating the facts it's something also to to complain about i mean, to talk about the authenticity of the emails and the facts that is that, that's what i think all of us should be concerned about and not how the information found their way i mean f f the emails found their way to the media as long as they are authentic and 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 they are factual and they talk to what could potentially become a problem for this country of undue political influence by corporates which appear to be benefiting or which appear to have already benefited after depositing money to the CR17 campaign. I think that's what all of us will be concerned about at this point in time. You've participated in a wider conversation about the state of the media, credibility, uh, people who control certain narratives. We're still talking about the rogue unit, the veracity of those stories years later. You've spoken about how you feel you've been persecuted. Uh, you've said you've been shut out of corporate opportunities and you've been uh, smeared, I think the word that you used was, by people because of that story. Knowing that um, and then going up against a very group of powerful people with this information, what's changed and you don't have a fear about that happening again? Look, I, I, when I resigned from Sunday Times over the same story, there was something I said at the end of my resignation that, that like toxic waste, the truth always have a, a funny way of coming out, even if you can bury it underneath. I'm, I'm not concerned about what people say because I know that uh, the truth will always exonerate people. You can lie and lie and lie and lie, but at some point people are going to uh, come out and say, but look, we don't think what we're saying is the truth. And this is the same uh, 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 modus operandi which these people have been using. And look at people on, on, on social media now. They are, they, are, they are wide awake now to say that, but guys, you cannot as the media uh, keep on telling us things which don't appear to be making sense. And, 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 and if you thought the, the rogue unit story was something which was just a, a by the way kind of thing, check how difficult is it now for the people who have been saying, one, the rogue unit does not exist, uh, to sustain that narrative. Now they are saying it does exist, but it was legal. Initially they were saying no rogue unit, it did not exist. Now they are saying, okay, uh, it does exist, but it was actually legal. So, 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 so you can see that lies have got short legs and I'm not necessarily concerned about it. And that's the reason why none of them uh, to date has dared to sue me. None of them has dared to say this guy is talking nonsense because they know that is the truth. And, and, and is the truth which is uncomfortable for them and is the truth which they never wished could actually find its way out to the public. But, you know, the public uh, uh, are not stupid. They can see when you are taking them for granted. They can see when you are insulting their intelligence. And the people that I've referred to as the, the members of the cabal, today they've been exposed because they can't keep on lying to members of the public and insulting their intelligence, saying uh, uh, the sun actually uh, arises from the west when we all know that it actually comes from the east. There, there are issues uh, around credibility. I think it was Wakuda Safaro who wrote an article about certain people whose voices are amplified and certain people whose voices are not. And you're saying that uh, it's now clear that what you said is the truth, but some people are saying, actually, no, you've still been, you know, your stories are not correct. You're not a credible journalist. And we should take even the stories um, like an expose like this because it's coming from you and Mzilikaziwa Africa as well as someone else. Perhaps there's a credibility issue there and there, there's a trust issue around the kind of information that you come out with. Look, it, it's, it's quite interesting, I, I want to tell you. The people who are saying that there could be credibility issues ne, are the same people who today are following us on those, on those things that we have done. Secondly, 
they are, they are saying there could be credibility issues, but the president is not saying these people are fabricating information. They say uh, they were concerned about how they found their facts. And the same people are saying there could be credibility issues are the same cabal members who have been fixing narratives, peddling disinformation, and also uh, 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 you know, manipulating content. So now because we have exposed that kind of uh, uh, corrupt journalism, they say, no, no, these people are not credible. And the intention has always been clear to uh, 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 try and discredit us so that when we say, hang on, guys, what you're doing is not right, uh, you are peddling disinformation, you are playing politics, people don't uh, 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 take us seriously. Some of them, we can, we can, I, can, I can give you a couple of examples. They have been openly behaving like politicians, taking sides in political debates. You can see, even when they write things, you will even be confused uh, whether this person is a politician or a journalist. We had a journalist like Karima Brown recently taking the EFF to court saying they have threatened me and I don't feel safe. Since when is deregistration of a political party a recourse for a, for, for a journalist that seeks uh, protection? We all know you go to the press ombudsman, you take them to court, you sue them, or you, you get bodyguards. But in this case, he wanted a political party, the whole political party, to be deregistered. So, so all of these things, can, you can see that you are dealing with politicians who are posing as journalists and using our names collectively. As, as, as the media to play politics. That's un, uh, uh, unacceptable and something which we have been fighting. That's why they're saying, ah, they don't have credibility. They want to lie and continue lying to the public unchallenged. We can't accept that. Thanks so much for your time on SABC News. Peter Ramperi joining me in studio.